I am calling because I'm very concerned. Um, we have some actual proof that a trucker may actually be transporting uh, bird flu. Um, we, um, we have a federal agent who is aware who has taken the documents to many agencies, including New York State Police, the FBI in many, many states, um, infection control disease. And what um, this trucker reported was that he works for Department of Homeland Security. Um, he's a Spanish man who um, is trucking an independent truck. He goes down to the corner of Broadway and Clinton in Albany, New York, at the Department of Homeland Security facility every single evening for loads. He said there are Ray Moore and Flanagan's and J.B. Hunt trucks ahead of him loading, that he has taken loads from a silo above Glens Falls. His truck actually was lowered into the ground into a silo when the truck came out of the ground. He was given a shot in his arm to told to protect his family. He transported um, iced refrigerated loads to the Pentagon, Baltimore, um, Maryland, uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, he was told that if the, um, he, he told, told the federal investigator how he's getting paid through the Bank of America mm. with a number. He walks up to a window. He, he presents his number. He is taken to a back room and paid in cash. He showed the federal agent $100,000 worth of receipts because he gets $5,000 per load, and he's done as Whoa. many as three loads per day. Okay, now, wait. Let me just stop you right here because this is amazing information, to say the least. Now, perhaps he is transporting vaccines refrigerated vaccines. Is that a possibility? Anything that has to be iced either has to be an antigen or an antibody. That's all we know. But we know that they gave him a shot to transport it, that they told him it was to protect his family, that it is obviously something that has to be kept refrigerated. Um, the one He did one load for a complete week to Tucson, Arizona and back, but the amount of money that they're paying him under the table through Bank of America, only loading at night. They call him and they ask him to come down to meetings at Department of Homeland Security at 3 o'clock in the morning. They'll ask him how he's doing and send him back home and say, fine, you're okay, go back home. He has other truckers. He knows of a trucker with a 53-foot bed unit that took a, a, a missile type. He was able to see his load, and that was taken out to Phoenix, Arizona. He was given $18,000 to truck that load two times. Um, it was eight, 80 tons, and he blew his brakes. The Department of Homeland Security took care of it. Um, he also has been to two silos. He's been to many cities with his loads. He is continuously working for Department of Homeland Security, and they are reloading, relocating him since the, since the federal agents and the state police were notified. We were notified that he is being relocated to Tucson, Arizona, at a base 15 miles below Tucson. And okay, that now, is, let me just ask you, Mary, how did you come upon this information? Um, I can't. I can't say. For, I, I mean, I just what I'm saying already has probably put me in danger. But it is. It is the testimony that many people are aware of, and they are doing nothing about it. And the um, the uh, some of the high ups in uh, New York State Police were quoted as saying, "It's bigger than both of us. We're not touching it with a ten foot pole." Oh my goodness! Wow. And we we were told that there were retired New York State troopers that are getting paid two and three times their salary. That are the tail cars. They're 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 actually um in vans in back of these Raymore and Flanagan trucks and these transports, and they are within a mile behind them. So if you ever go down the New York State Thruway and look at these double Raymore and Flanagan trucks that are going west towards Syracuse, which is a CIA front, what they are doing is they have those those tail cars in the back. And they are, and from what I understand, those are retired state troopers that are escorting those loads. Okay, stay right there because we've got a four-minute break coming at us. She's given us a lot of facts supporting this. Mary, what do you think all of this means? He actually gave testimony to the names of the people that are running the show. There's a retired three-star uh, African-American general that's in Albany that's, that's there late at night when he does his pickups. There's another guy named Fatah who is Muslim. There are many white suits. Um, they're all the truckers, not just him. He named five of them are being paid through Bank of America with their independent numbers. He has a uniform that he wears, which is a light blue shirt with blue with um, buttons down the front, short sleeve. It says Eastern Connection with a red and orange um, sewn insignia on the shirt. He has to wear black pants and white sneakers, or they do not allow him to the facilities. He is not allowed to uh, stop the truck once they start it uh, to urinate. They have to either go in urinals or pee in the truck. They are at the end of their transport. They are given a white bag by Department of Homeland Security that they have to put all their belongings in. They are not allowed to chew gum in the cabs of the trucks on the transports. 
They are escorted when he's been to the Pentagon. There have been people with 45s around their waist in plain clothes that have met the trucks and also on the slips that he gets paid. Um, it, his slips say 30 Carner Road, Albany, New York, to 11 Wards Lane, Menans, New York. And he stated that he has need, been to neither of those locations, but every single one of his trucking slips for which he gets paid says those addresses. Okay, say them. that again. 30? 30, 30 Carner Road, C- Albany, New how York. Spell, how do you spell K-A-R-N-E-R. It? Mm-hmm. 30 Carner Road, Albany, New York, to 11 Wards Lane, Menands, New York. How do you spell Menands? M-E-N-A-N-D-S. <clears throat> and okay. he's also been transported by Menands police to the city limits when he, when he leaves the facility with a load, and they turn around at the city limit and return as he progresses on with his transport. Okay, now my question is, why did he begin talking about this, or who did he decide to tell this to? Obviously, he knows that he's not supposed to be telling anybody this information. Um, I, I, the impression that I got from the agent that I spoke to, because um, many people got this, I guess they have um, sent this to a lot of agencies, is um, he spoke to someone that he knows personally, and he, he didn't think he was doing anything wrong. He just thought he had a good gig. He think, I think he just thinks he has a good gig with the government. When he was giving the testimony, it was an innocent testimony, and they did not bring up FEMA trains, bird flu, and any of that because they didn't want to tip him off that, you know, that he might be doing something wrong because these people have their claws in him hour by the hour all day long. Okay. Um, this man said that the government told them that if he's good to them, they'll be good to him, and that they were going to take him to a place called Sandy Point in Maryland on the water for government people to where it's safe when this was over. And then they have since sent him now to Tucson, Arizona with his family to relocate him on base housing, and all he has to pay for is food because this investigator has spoken to him three times. What I'd like for you to do is call me at the power hour, 877 817 9829, if you have any additional information on this or anything that we can do about this, um, give me a call and, and stay abreast with me because this sounds pretty uh, discouraging, if you ask me. It's not just it's not just that. Um, he's had lead cars that, that, like, he'll tell him, they'll tell him where he's got to go, and he'll be going to, from point A to point B, and somebody will interrupt the trip and then divert him down a road. Um, he went to Glens Falls, New York, went to a dead-end street by a Stewart by the Civic Center in Glens Falls, New York. They opened a gate, and he drove six miles on a gravel driveway to an underground silo. When, he, when the truck came out of the silo after he waited with the other truckers for three hours while they loaded in secret, the people who were were, who appeared with the truck when the truck was coming out of the ground, had Tyvek suits, the masks, the gloves, and the, all the works on. Um, he's also transported um, at the 109th Air Guard at Stratton Air Force Base. He did do 90 boxes of clear plastic white fluid. Um, he did see that load. Rarely does he see his loads, but apparently he loaded that at the uh, one, uh, C-130 at the 109th Air Guard. And um, he's done a lot of a lot of loads with these types of things, um, you know, medical supplies, equipment, and but but specifically refrigerated to Tucson and to the Pentagon and to Baltimore. And he and I think I think that's it's up to no good. Um, along the New York State Thruway, there are miles and miles of car carriers that they've been adding to. There are has to be 30 miles of them right now sitting on the track since before Christmas that seem to be increasing in length. And my my are you, are you waiting at car carriers? Are you talking about on the road, off on, road? No, they're on the railroad tracks, pulled over to the side of the tracks on the on the on the spare on the spare tracks, mm-hmm. and they're actually car carriers. Um, and I think it's for dead bodies. I think it's it's prepositioning. I do know um, a Pakistani diplomat who has recently left the Albany area, who I knew personally, who told me that America is no more that he's leaving. He took a child out of a local school in the middle of the school year to leave. He, he uh, is a player. He knows a lot of very important people, I know for a fact, and he has left the area, has left the, the country. Um, so I do think that something's going on very sinister. No one will convince me of anything other than that. I've been watching this for eight months trying to t- warn people, and there are many agencies that are aware, and they are just not willing to do anything about it from what I see. I mean, I'm nobody. They might be doing something about it that I don't know, but they've been made aware of everything you're hearing. Thank you very much, Mary, for calling in from New York. I really do appreciate your doing this. 
Whoa. Oh, it gives me goosebumps.